Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to take a deep dive into visual perception and I'm going to talk about seven gestalt principles that help us organize information that comes in through our eyes. These principles will not only blow your mind, but they'll also help you create more effective designs and improve your understanding of how we perceive the world around us. So let's get started. Now, first things first, where do these Gestalt principles come from? Well, a group of German psychologists in the 1920s and 30s developed them to help explain how it was that we organize all the individual elements in our visual field to make sense of them. I've already made a video about these three founders that you can find here, or I'll give a link down in the description below if you want to learn more about who the Gestalt psychologists were. The key thing about the Gestalt principles is the word Gestalt. An organized whole is perceived as greater than the sum of its parts. The Gestalt psychologists were pushing back at the dominance of behaviorism and psychology at the time, which portrayed perception and the rest of psychology as the result of learning. The behaviorists believed that everything you know about the world is because you directly experienced something in your past. The Gestalt psychologists, on the other hand, found it remarkable that humans seem to have an innate capacity of seeing the world as wholes, that they construct meaning from the parts in systematic ways. To convince people that this was indeed something being missed by the behaviorists, the Gestalt psychologists came up with the laws of perception that all humans seem to follow. The laws have in more recent decades been renamed as the principles of perception. It's time to introduce the seven Gestalt principles of perception. The first principle is proximity. Our mind tends to group elements that are close to each other as part of the same object or group. As you can see here, the dots are grouped in four clusters, one large one on the left and three smaller ones on the right. We perceive these groupings because of the distances between the dots and the greater spaces between each cluster. Next up is similarity. We tend to group elements that look alike or share similar characteristics. Here the dots are all the same distance from one another, but we tend to see each row as a separate group because of the alternating colors. The third principle is continuity. Our eyes naturally follow a continuous path, whether it's a line, curve, or a sequence of shapes. We tend to perceive this figure as two keys. We see one key in front, but we also perceive the other key in the back because we see it as being continuous, even though part of the key is blocked by the key in the front. The fourth principle is closure. Our minds have a tendency to complete shapes or forms that are not entirely enclosed, creating a whole image from partial information. Notice here that none of the objects are actually drawn as complete, yet we perceive three circles, a triangle outlined in black, and even a third triangle that's completely white. This is because we automatically perceive each shape as a whole. The fifth principle is common fate. We tend to perceive objects moving in the same direction as part of the same group. This is easily seen with a school of fish or a flock of birds. The school or flock becomes a unified whole that seems to have a mind of its own. The sixth principle is good gestalt, also known as pragnance. Our minds naturally organize complex images into simpler, more organized forms. There are so many details and small parts to this image, yet as we back away, we perceive this as a single flower. And finally, the seventh principle is figure ground. Our perception separates an object from its background, allowing us to focus on the most important elements. This was originally shown by a classic visual illusion known as Rubens' vase, where there's ambiguity about the foreground and background. Is the vase here the figure and the black is the background? Or is it that there are faces here looking at one another against a light background?
Now that we've covered the seven Gestalt principles, let's explore some real life applications to see how we can enhance your designs and communication. Now remember, principle one was proximity, that we group elements close to each other. You'll find proximity used a lot in architecture. I was recently in Ghent, Belgium, where I saw this centuries-old building clearly illustrating proximity just to set the different windows apart. Proximity is used a lot in websites to help the user easily find the right links or buttons to click. Notice how this website, HubSpot.com, groups elements together and creates spaces between those groups. Principle two, similarity. We group elements that look alike or share characteristics. Here's another building facade in Ghent. Notice how the windows themselves are made up of multiple elements, individual panes that share common characteristics to form an organized whole. And this logo from Panda Security, where the logo mark that looks like a panda connects perfectly with the word mark because of similarity. Finally, an infographic that uses repeated identical characters can make a stronger point about the rarity of an opinion or a disease or whatever. Principle three, continuity. Our eyes follow a continuous path. Here's another example from my trip to Ghent where I visited the St. Bavos Cathedral and I noticed the pattern used in the tall windows. See how it looks like ropes or tubes or thread that's interlaced even though we can't see the entire thread? I also came across this article about magicians using Gestalt principles, particularly the principle of continuity and rope tricks in which our mind perceives the rope as being continuous even though the part where it's not is being covered by the magician's hand. Principle four, closure. Our minds complete incomplete shapes or forms. Logos like these next two are excellent examples of how the principle of closure can be used to make an image that is attention grabbing and memorable. The World Wildlife Fund uses negative space to create a recognizable image. The Olympic rings don't show any complete rings, but we still see them as interconnected holes that are meant to represent the union of the five continents from where participating athletes came from in 1913. Principle five, common fate. We perceive objects moving together as part of the same group. Note how a sports team uniform design where elements such as color and logo placement visually connect the players as a single unit. Or how on this shopping site that sells shoes, they put all the shoes in the same direction because they all represent different varieties of the same kind of shoe. However, if you go back to the main landing page, shoes are shown in different directions and angles to clearly show that they represent different kinds of shoes. Principle six, good gestalt or prognance. We simplify complex images into more organized forms. Infographics, when they're done well, can simplify complex data into an easily digestible visual format. Good map making also requires attention to this principle. Notice how the Apple and Google Maps here try to take complex data and organize it in as simple of a way for the user as possible. The makers of the maps have to use color, fonts, shading, images, etc. to provide the simplest map that conveys the most info. Principle seven, figure ground. Our perception separates objects from their background. Figure ground is stable when objects are distinguishable from the background and the background holds no interest. Several visual elements can reinforce figure ground relationships and design, such as contrast, color, size, position, and focus. Notice how this logo is in white, like the surrounding background, yet we perceive it in front of the blue square. Or look at the RM Design School website that employs strong contrast to create a good figure ground relationship. The artist MC Escher was fascinated with figure ground relationships and explored them in different works of art, such as the ones that you see here.
By understanding and applying these principles, you can create visually appealing designs, enhance your communication, and make a lasting impact on your audience. So there you have it, the seven Gestalt principles and their profound impact on the way that we see the world. I hope that you found this interesting and insightful, and it'll make you think twice about the way that you're seeing the world. So if you really liked this video, I hope that you'll consider giving it a thumbs up, maybe even subscribing to my channel, because I have many more videos that are about psychology, neuroscience, and related topics, and I'd love to have you see more of my content. So thanks for watching and stay curious.